Hello everyone, it's Phil here from A City Planner playing City Builders and today I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to go over how to start a city on a completely vanilla map. Now I do have all of the expansions uh, in place. I'm using the Marin Bay um, map from Campus Life and uh, I chose this for a couple of reasons. I, I like that it has um, two ways onto the interstate um, and you start on an island which I think is pretty neat. Um, so I'm going to talk about how I would begin on this on this map um, if I were brand new and had no mods. So it's going to be a little different than my other videos because I am extensively modded and I'm starting with nothing. No roads uh, except for the standard, uh, you know, two lane road. Um, so to start out, I would want to use one of these roads for my residential and commercial and the other for my industrial and link them up. Um, so the reason I would do that is I want the people working in the industrial area to be able to get to work easily, but I want the industrial area to use the interstate for deliveries and uh, to, to, to export. Um, so I'm going to start out by adding roundabouts. Um, and you can see I don't have one way to load one or one way roads right now uh, Way to fix that is to actually just place a road and delete it and then <laughs> they give you the the two-lane roads So I'm gonna put a standard roundabout Right in between the two dots there I'll go to their markers And then where that meets up, I'm going to put in a four lane road and use the freeform tool to actually create my connections. None of this has to be perfect, but uh, we do want to make sure that the arrows are pointing the right way so that you can get on the highway. And we also want to look, nope, no, there are no, uh, no traffic signals there. Okay, so we're going to do the exact same thing over here. So I will go to the end of this in between the guides. Use my curve tool and make another roundabout. Okay, now everything lines up correctly. So now I have my start here. And I think the question you gotta ask yourself then is, well, what now? Where am I gonna build my residential? Where am I gonna build my industrial? Um, and part of this, part of the thought that needs to go into this is, where's my wastewater gonna go? Where's my water gonna go? Because those should not be uh, near each other. And uh, your water should not be sucking up wastewater. So I like this area for industrial in this bay for the commercial and and residential so i think um, we need to be very careful looking at our bank balance because we're going to need to build power plants um, water plants lots of uh, lots of infrastructure so let's be cognizant of that I'm going to try to use the landscape to, to make a, an interesting place, too. Okay. So I see that my money is already, you know, taking a hit from this little bit of development that I've done. Uh, I'm going to get a real basic grid going for my industrial area because I want to be able to get the power plant in place. Um, 
I want to have enough power, so I'm going to do a coal power plant. I put this pretty close to the entryway to the city. The reason for that is I'm going to be exporting all my coal to start out with, so it's going to come right off this freeway and pull in here. Um, I'm also going to want to do wastewater over here. So I can do inland, look at the capacity, you know, 120,000 uh, square meters. Same thing with this. Cost is the same. One is draining into the water, the other is not. So I think, personally, I don't want to pollute the water like that. So I am going to keep it inland. And then I'm going to need water as well. And I don't want to necessarily have those mixing. So I'm going to put that way over here. And I'm going to need to connect these areas up. Because I don't have a lot of money, I'm going to try to use these as efficiently as I possibly can. Okay, and then I need to get power. We don't want to forget about this. Get the power over to the water. We can do that a little bit cleaner. And I wouldn't worry about, you know, how pretty this is to start out with. We will get to that in the future. Right now, we just want to make sure that we have enough money to not die. And what you can see is we are already running low on money. Um, so I'm going to use this uh, four lane road as my main drag and I'm gonna come off here uh, I like to go one beyond where the guide uh, tells you to go and the reason for that is then you get a four by four grid on either side of the road which means you get max density um, so as far as your your starting city grid you could do whatever you want um, cities like Salt Lake City have monster grids um, cities like Portland have some really, really tiny grids. Neither is right or wrong. They have their benefits uh, and their, their their drawbacks. The benefits of a big grid are, are that, you know, it gives you uh, more building per, uh, you know, per area of roadway. Uh, whereas a smaller grid gives you more options for places to walk. Um, it's just a personal preference, really. So I'm going to try to use this forest and not intrude too much into it. Part of that is a financial reality right now. We're not doing all that well financially. I think that it might be time to start getting our financial house in order by starting up the sim. Up until this point, I've had everything turned off. And that works fine until you start running out of money. So we want to start making some. So I'm going to start zoning. I want to keep these areas close. One thing that I I know right now is if you are to work right here and you need to go, or if you were to live right here and need to work over here, you have to go all the way around. That's, that's not ideal. I'm going to remedy that soon. So what you see me doing here is I'm going up four, uh, leaving four on the other side. Um, I want it to be walkable to get to the to the main street. Ooh, problem. We are we did not get water pipes over here. Okay. Hopefully, we can get to a population of three hundred quickly, so we get more money. So sim, 200. Once we get to 300, we'll get some more money and that'll help. All right, almost there. This is why it's important to time when you start simming. Um, time it well.
all right little hamlet and uh, this will give us taxes loans a little bit of money schools a landfill uh, all things that we're gonna need right now because people are gonna want to go to school uh, throw away their trash and and uh, and go to the doctor so I'm gonna pause it because we are gonna want to finish building our water pipes okay So we'll speed this up and hopefully some of this will fill in a little bit and we'll be in a spot where we're making a little bit of money. You can see we're already almost making money again. So that's good. Or for the first time, I should say, not again. <laughs> so as I go through and do this, you'll notice that I just disconnected the power. So I wanna make sure I get that reconnected so I still make money from this area. Now I'm finally generating a profit. We can look at our RCI and uh, see that residential is what people need. Um, I want to find a way to connect the two of these up. Again, I, I, I know that uh, people are going to want to be able to walk to work. I don't have the ability to create pedestrian paths yet. Otherwise, I'd do that. Um, but I do have the ability to get creative. So that's what I'll do. So what I'm gonna do is link up these areas. And the goal for me is going to, oh, there I am, Worthy Village. Get districts, loans, police department, emergency services, some agricultural uh, specialization, self-sufficient buildings. Yeah, firehouse and PD. Um, so we've got some specializations. We're making a little bit of money. So I want to keep this simming the entire time and work on fixing issues that I see coming up. Now I do want to provide some way into the industrial area from the residential, but I don't want it to mix. I want there to be a buffer between them so that you don't have a lot of uh, issues with pollution spilling over into the residential area, but at the same time, you know, I, I want that, that buffer. And while I don't have pedestrian paths, this should provide a way to let people in. And you can already see people are walking. So that's going to take a car off the road. That's that's a good thing. Many people are walking. Um, the other way that I'm going to make this less desirable is by looking at the junctions. And I'm going to put stop signs there instead of a stoplight. This one I'm, I'm happy to leave as a signal. Um, it's really kind of the main way in. And I think that I'm going to build this area north. Or not north, but north from what you see right now, I suppose. But we need to start focusing on some of the services that we're missing. So a landfill will impact all the districts. So we want to give it convenient access to all of them. Now that I think about it, I'm not sure that I want it to load that way. So I might redo that in just a second. So 
I'm going to expand the industrial area. Let's give the landfill access to this main road, but not take it from it so that all those vehicles are not forcing themselves onto this main road. Um, this will also make it easier to connect up our power because we got to fix that. We can actually start eliminating some of these extra power lines too. Okay, let's make sure we have water there. And it's time to start thinking about safety. Um, we're making some good money at this point. So this is loud and it is necessary to keep everyone safe. So I'm going to try to keep it on the main road. Same thing with the police department. Um, so now these will have convenient access to basically everywhere. Um, and when you're placing these, it's, it's, it, it's important to think about the road. If you place it on a local road and you plan on expanding it in the future, that will actually, they, the buildings that you plop will make it impossible to expand. You'll have to move them. So this is something to think about um, while you're placing them. Okay, so some vehicles using this, lots of pedestrians. That's exactly what I was hoping for. And now there's lots of residential demand. And we're a tiny town, industry areas, getting some policies, and we get our pedestrian paths, which is what I was looking for. Fishing routes, canals. You can start to see that just in a, in a couple minutes, things have really opened up. And we have lots of money. So this is actually working pretty effectively, so I might just leave it as is and focus on getting more uh, residential uses in place. So I'm going to centrally locate the school to be near all the residences and get simming again. I'll slow it down a little bit. And I'm thinking that this little finger might be an interesting place to have the next residential area. So um, I think road hierarchy is really important here. Um, we're going to want to load off from a collector. So I'm going to place the collector there. And that's probably a little further than it needs to go. And we'll use this to form the street network in this area. We've been using that uh, 10 by 20 grid. Here's where I miss move it a little bit. <laughs> It's a mod that allows you to shift roads. So we're kind of not really respecting the landscape, so to, so to speak, but uh, it's okay. Might terraform a little bit so I can make that work. Another trip tip, sometimes if you go past, you're able to make it, make it work. A little ugly there. Let's terraform a little bit. Even this out. We have a little bit of money now so we can do some things like that. I also want to provide a, a local access to this road find a way to join these two grids. That'll work. Maybe that'll be a park space there. Mm, I don't love that. Maybe 
being a little bit too particular about this, but I like it to look good. All right. Struggling a little bit with this, that's where I use my freeform tool. Get the road straight. And the reason why this is a little bit of a struggle is because I have uh, this road, which was wider, and I, I I went ahead and went 11 over in each of the spaces, so that creates some oddities. Hmm. Shoot. I think that that is gone for good. Did not mean to do that. Bummer. Well, it's gone, so it's... Might as well use it. Create some interesting areas over here. Let's get that connected by water. And the entire time I'm just letting it sim, making my little bit of money in the background. Which I think is a really important thing to do when you're starting the game. So the other thing you'll notice is that now we have these intersections very close. Uh, I do want the stoplight on where the, the intersection where the two collectors come together, but going into our info menu and into traffic routes, looking at the junctions, I think now is a good time to start managing these junctions and thinking about. Um, whether we need stoplights or not. They're probably not warranted there. They would be here. Especially if you think about the location of this, uh, this would have pretty spectacular views in the, in the future. You might want to upzone this a bit. So I'll continue my pattern making along the, uh, I'll, I'll zone along the collectors with commercial again no right or wrong here but it makes sure that everyone ever, it makes sure that everyone has the ability to walk to a residential or to, to retail uses I go back this up a little bit there as well and now we're a little money short of the clinic by little I mean a lot. <laughs> so let's speed up our simulation. We'll take a look. Coming along quite nicely, still lots of residential demand, so I assume this will fill in in just a couple seconds. Definitely going to be a need for that clinic. Um, one of the things that you don't have access to right off the bat is death care. Um, that's certainly something that we'll need too. We're getting close. Uh, that'll be probably the next building that we plop after the after the uh, the clinic. Well, we're gonna this. We should we should look at the junctions elsewhere too. Probably not. We probably don't want traffic signals here. Get away with just having a stop sign. Now, if you look here, you can see that most of the traffic is actually using this arterial rather than going down this slow path. Some workers know the know the back way, see how our roundabouts are doing. Some traffic is utilizing our roundabouts and our traffic flow very, very good as we'd expect it this early, but we're also being very um, diligent about making a, a community that is going to have good traffic flow. So 
tools. Now we have enough for our clinic. And I think that we're just going to make this public services corner. So we've got our clinic here, our fire department, police station. All we need is a post office. <laughs> about a hundred people away from our next level up. Let's take a look at some of the other things we have available to us now. So I do have all of the expansions. You kind of see some, um, some of those options available to me right now. And I'm thinking it might be fun to do some custom zones. Boomtown. Oh, let me look back at what we got here taxis level three buildings walking tours lots of policies some uh, interchanges we have highways now some mass transit more water pipes so we have some fun stuff that we can do now so I'm going to keep this sim going quickly. We're not losing money, so you might as well. And let's fix up some of the problems that we left behind. <laughs> okay. Actually. to do a little bit of lane mathematics here as best I can. And then there's no reason to not just convert this over to a highway piece. So I'm going to do that right now too really promote the speed and ease of use here. Uh, no need to change that. Alright. Kind of fun now. So I'm going to make this kind of a... Uh, oh, actually, power will be fun because we are running low on electricity. might mirror what we had before, put this by that one stoplight, make sure it's close to the interstate, and let's look at our other services as well. So we're doing good on water. Uh, we do need a cemetery now. So when we put that on the... These are difficult to move. So I want to put it in a place where it's not going to necessarily need to be moved. So close to downtown, close to the residence. Uh, it's and now I want to build this district. So first, I'm going to set a citywide policy. Um, you know, power is a problem up up front. So you could set power and water. Those are good ones to. To, to, to set up right away um, so I might do that it'll make the power that I have go a little bit longer and then nothing else is really all that appealing to me right now um, so I'll leave it there let's see what they did to our oh and that killed our budget so maybe we'll disable those for now we're okay. Let's see if that fixes our budget problem. Much better. So this is going to unzone everything here. But I thought it might be kind of fun to have uh, kind of a organic and green area right here. So 
so if you click on this, uh, the name of this district, you can set specific policies for this district. And let's say that in this area, they like to recycle. And we will build them a recycling center as well. The nice thing about the recycling center is that unlike this landfill, which will fill up, it's already 19% full. Um, you can keep using that indefinitely and these people will now prefer it. You can see the buildings are changing. Uh, so these eco-friendly houses and uh, stores a little more catered to these particular residents, the eco center. All right. So let's see what else we can do here. It might be fun to play with transit a little bit too. That might be something good to, to learn about right off the bat. So let's do that. Not enough money yet. So it's $30,000 for the bus depot. Biofuel is a little bit more. The difference is pollution. Um, and electricity needs a little bit less for the biofuel bus depot. I might be willing to wait for it, but probably not. I guess we could take it alone for the first time. That might be. Yeah, why don't we take it alone and build a bio biofuel depot? So this is where all the buses are going to originate. And now we should have the ability to place bus lines. So I think the thing that beginner players can, can lose track of is that people are willing to walk to the bus. So I'm going to start this line off in the industrial area. And this, this first line will be used primarily to serve this new neighborhood that we've created. So I'm trying to space the stops appropriately so that you know they're close enough but and, and mirrored so that they're predictable. But I also want them to, to make some sense. So these should be close enough to all these residents that they're willing to walk. Let's create our second line. I'm actually going to create it from this original stop. You might think, well, why would you do that? Actually, why don't we mirror it this time? Then we're gonna serve the downtown area here. So this is close enough that you could walk between the two, so a transfer is possible. And then we'll go into this residential area. Kind of just do the reverse of the last route around here. Now the reason I decided to do that is I, I don't want these to, to get caught queuing. Um, so I don't want them stacking and, and, and creating traffic messes. And we already are going to have a lot of pressure in this segment of road. So you see all the buses coming down. We're gonna get 17 people a week taking it. Let's look at our traffic, 93% traffic flow still. So very, very good. Keeping people walking and on the bus is gonna help a lot with that. 
Um, so our options are relatively limited right now. We do have the ability to create ferries if we wanted to buy another piece of land. Um, we could have a ferry going back and forth. Might be kind of neat to do in the future. We also have streetcars. But to have a streetcar, you need to have a streetcar depot. So this might be kind of fun. So why, why don't we take a look at streetcars as well? We're going to overlay that a bit with our bus route. So you need 40,000 for this. We actually have need for more of basically every type of zone. Pause it because I know that we're going to impact our power line situation. So let's pause it for a minute, rebuild those lines, look at our water. Right, so we've got that going. thinking I'd like to put some more visual buffers in between the residential area and the industrial area. Yeah, so if you were looking, you can still see it, but it's going to block some of that noise. Let's see. We don't have any parks yet. We also don't have a high school. That could be useful. We don't have a children's health center. That would be helpful to have as well. And we could start an industry specializations, and that's one way to really start making some money too. Maybe that's something that we could do back here. Maybe have a forestry. Lots of residential though, so I think that's what we're going to focus on. I think I'm going to go just a little bit further and then uh, kind of call it a day on the tutorial. Um, so I'm kind of modifying the grid that I established before build upon this a little more. We'll do something similar on the other end. We're going to need to really watch these because that'll kill our traffic flow. There are junction. space for a future arterial coming through here. Let's, or a collector. Actually, I'm going to undo that it, whenever possible. Meeting up at a 90 really improves traffic flow, so that's something you should probably contemplate as well. Let's 
close. Let's make sure we have water available here, and then we're going to zone the whole thing. Stick in the same path. Commercial in the middle. Residential on the outside. You could also mix it up too. I'm a big fan of that. Having neighborhood uh, commercial spaces. So that'd be something like uh, taking a 4x4 four four square here, throwing in some commercial. I mean, I'm character of this particular community and that is the character here um, let's add that buffer back visual buffer missing some of my landscaping tools that I normally use but this works too click a whole bunch. <laughs> All right, I'm going to continue to, let's see, getting close to our next unlock. So I'm going to start, I'm going to complete this train. I'm going to actually have it turn around here. And then I'm going to do some work on the junctions. And it, one thing you'll notice is that it's, this really touches on all of the different um, the different zones now. You can walk to it from a house, you can walk to your job, or go to a shop. All right, let's take a look at our junctions. Don't need to stop here. This one's probably a good place to have a stop now because of the tram line. This might have earned itself a stop because of the tram, although I think, oh, no, so actually it's up here. I did that purposefully, that's right. Um, I didn't want to have to add a signalized intersection here, so I made sure that the tram came up here, which already has a signalized intersection for that turn. And now we just need to wait till we have enough money to place that. You know, I'm impatient, and I know that we could pay this off take out a new loan <laughs> and be just a little bit away from being able to afford it. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. And because I know that this is not an area that I'm really super interested in developing, I'm going to just load it up with greenery. Maybe a nice big City Park with a pedestrian connection over to the neighborhoods over here. Which will also serve to, to, to provide access to stops over here. Throw a couple more parks in before we we end. So it's hard to stop playing once you get going. What, what you can see here is that this is improving the desirability of of the these lands. 
Um, so this is kind of a, a commercial area park. Let's throw one in there. And then we'll give a park over to this neighborhood as well. So let's place our tram line. So I'm going to start over here. We will have a stop right by these buses. Same thing here. We'll spread these out a little bit. We'll make this the fast way to get around. We'll mirror all of our stops so it's predictable. There we go. Let's take a look at our traffic. 92%. Little pressure in some of these areas. Particularly right here. There's a lot happening and only one way out, which is something that we would probably want to address soon. Even potentially right now, let's pause it for a quick second. So I do not like how this is getting used anymore. So I might prove our connection here and add that pedestrian path. Noticing a lot more traffic coming through. Um, it still would be desirable to have some way for trash collection to occur outside of loading up this collector, but I'm more concerned about keeping trucks out of the residential area. So that's what I'm gonna focus on. Let's see. road guidelines and that gives us the opportunity to kind of fill this out a little bit more too now we still have that pedestrian connection Someday, probably the next option, which is when, uh, or the next to unlock, which is probably where I'll end this as well. Um, I would, one of my favorite policies is to encourage biking. Um, it really reduces your traffic, but at this point, we have a, a good transit network. People are using it, people are walking. We're still, you know. 89% traffic flow. There are certainly things we can improve. This is a real bottleneck here. Um, so is this, but we've worked on it. We're trying to encourage people to walk places back into the 90s for traffic flow. We've got parks. Let's see our property values. Good in our downtown area. Drop a little bit as you go out. Uh, I think this would be a good time to think about you know, more education options. Um, I think believe the next unlock would give us offices and more density. So that's when you start thinking about the college um, and uh, things like that. Let's do a little bit more zoning to get us up to that next level. water okay this will fill in quickly I'm guessing because we have a lot of demand mm 
And there we are. Now we get our bigger buildings, tours, tourism, um, more roads. So lots of beautification that you could do now. Uh, larger fire and PD, more power plants, a big hospital, lots of new unique uh, park buildings, and lots of tourism buildings. So um, at this point, I am going to call it. I do want to let you know some of what I would do to this uh, city. I think this would be a great area for tourism, and that's one of the reasons why I put the roads so close. Um, I think it would be a great place to, to kind of have some hotels, a nice view, mountains in the bay. Uh, you could also do that up here. Another reason why I thought having a collector kind of come all the way up here would be neat. Put it by some of these ruins. Um, but I think we're in a good spot. We are, our city's functioning well. We're making tons of money. And if you were starting and this is your city, uh, traffic is good, money's coming in, and, uh, and you're in a place where you could continue to rock and roll. Uh, at this point, you, know, you have the ability to purchase multiple tiles. You could do something unique, have ferries going back and forth. Uh, you could buy over here, add another interchange, and, and uh, continue to build out here. Um, lots of different options, or you can bridge across too. Uh, uh, but because you've thoughtfully constructed the beginning of your city, you, ha you really you have unlimited options going going from here. So um, let me know what you thought of the video. Uh, if this is uh, a logical build in your mind, let me know. I will save this and post this on the workshop. I'll leave that down in the comments later. You can play with this this build if you want. Um, and uh, let me know if you want me to continue building this. Uh, there's a lot that could be done here. I think it's interesting. Uh, it could be a kind of a side-by-side uh, -side with my main uh, build that I'm working on right now, Bluffside Crossing. Check it out if you haven't already. Uh, let me know what you thought, thought about this build. Let me know if, you're, if this helped you. Uh, let me know if there's anything else you want me to dive into further. I'd like to do some more tutorials and, and, uh, and the, you know, continue to, to share my knowledge of the game and, and wrap in real planning. Uh, expertise and knowledge into the game so thank you so much again like the video if you liked it subscribe if you aren't already and are interested in, in more content like this and hit that notification bell if you want to be notified as soon as i post new content thank you so much 